and welcome to Grass Track Sports production of the first round of the British Sidecar Speedway Championships for 2019. I'm delighted to say that we're back here at the Isle of Wight Speedway track, which we've had plenty of Sidecar Speedway for in the past. Of course, who can forget that 2007 Gold Trophy event that was won by Scott Christopher and Trent Coppy. Seems a long time ago, but now we're back here at the island racing sidecars. Now we've only had one sidecar speedway meeting this season, it was up at Leicester Speedway and it was duly won by Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe. They won a fantastic final, um, British sidecar speedway champions for 2018 of course they was not Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe, it was Paul Whiteland and Alan Elliott. So we go into the first round proper of the British sidecar speedway championships this, after, this evening and we've got Paul Whiteland of course here but he's got a different passenger. We've got Mark Cosser here and he's got a different passenger. So whether or not that will play into the evening's entertainment, we'll have to wait and see. But most people are thinking that these two are going to be the two to catch this afternoon. We've also got, of course, Mick Cave and Bradley Steer, who were going very, very well last year. And they were going equally good at Leicester a few weeks ago. So the usual suspects will be up there in amongst the winnings this evening. Now we've got a few newcomers to the sport. Jack Penfold and Kieran Ivey have gone steadily quicker and quicker and quicker as their experience has grown. And they are one of the crews that are really up and coming this season. And uh, 2019 could be the season that Jack and Kiz really come to the forefront of the sport. So hopefully in a moment we're going to go and try and catch some of the riders and see what their thoughts are going into this first round of the British Sidecar Speedway Championships. Obviously it is the one title to win in Sidecar Speedway in Britain. It's led on to many different things. We've obviously had winners such as Ivor Matthews, Paul Pinfold in the past. It is a big trophy that all of these boys are going to want to win. So we'll get some of the thoughts of the riders in a moment and hopefully we'll have an excellent night's racing. So we've just wandered straight into the pits for tonight's racing and talk about if the devil cast his net. We've got a few characters around. We've got Adam Cooper-Smith just stood to my left. We've got Matt Fumarola, fresh from a great ride last weekend in Frittenden. We've got his son Jake, who I think is on mechanic duties this, e this evening. And we've got a bit of a legend of the sport, Keith Wall over here as well, who actually lives on the island. So we'll try and catch up with a few of these. But first of all, Matt, last weekend went really well for you. Yeah, yeah, really happy. Um, we've made a few changes to the bike and um, it's fast, but it, it, it's a bitch. It, uh, it's so hard to hold on to. But uh, we, we're modelling it on Marks. Uh, just that I'm a bit fatter than him, I suppose. So it don't quite do what it does with him. But uh, no, really happy with it. And it's a real good start to the season. Now, obviously, uh, last yeah, last weekend, what Matt's talking about is at Frittenden. If you haven't caught it yet, Matt's uh, uh, several wheelies throughout the day. Um, it was very spectacular and obviously didn't slow him down too much. But um, what do you think the reason is that you're getting all that extra drive? Um, a whole host of things, really. Uh, it could be. It could be a. Let's just let's, let's just blame it on Liam, really, because he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was getting back too soon. Yeah, that's the way though. The driver blames the passenger. The passenger blames the dog, and the dog blames. Yeah, that's it. But no, we've. Um, as I say we've made a few changes. Um, uh, not don't really want to say what they are yet because we're still testing bits. But um, it's made the bike drive really hard and uh, where last year it was spinning and it's just a matter now of for the extra help that we, we're getting from the drive we've now got to compensate that and, and get the bike turning it was turning okay but it was it was hard work yeah. and, it, and we were always pretty much on the edge of edge of doom that's how it <laughs> felt uh, in that incident where um, we did that wheelie halfway around the turn me and Liam were talking about how quick you think of things in that split second and Liam turned around and said I actually wrote my will whilst we were in the air so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah he stood in fun. for the day and uh, it's probably not what he ca <laughs> thought he was going to get so uh, yeah that was I mean that was grass track and obviously the grass track's going really well this year and the back end of last year too but speedway tonight uh, obviously back on the uh, the machine that you rode with last year yeah um, all good for the preparation for speedway yeah we had a we had a good start at Leicester we had, I think we had a couple of wins in a second um, and then unfortunately the, the fuel tank split um, so we've, we've mounted that differently now hope that won't happen again um, the only real difference we made from last year was we actually just swapped the handlebars over and, and as daft as it sounds it just felt so much more comfortable and allows me to get on and off the bike so yeah good start at Leicester and hopefully we, we've, we've got something to go on with now yeah, well, I mean, you were almost certainly going to make the final there. So, uh, yeah, it was it was literally just that problem, I think, that, that caused you to not make the final. Yeah, it was just we just couldn't get out in our last heat. And, and I think we only needed a point to be straight in. 
So, uh, yeah, we had a good run and hopefully we can continue that tonight. Another one tonight. Now, obviously, back on the island tonight. Um, I'll just bring Adam in for a second. Adam, passenger in this, afternoon, uh, this evening. Yeah. Um, passenger in Phil Wynn and obviously Phil's got a new bit of kit. So can you tell us a little bit about the new bit of kit? Not an awful lot, apart <laughs> from the fact it was only finished building last night. Uh, so it's been run up, but it's not been ridden yet. So um, it's... If anyone remembers the old BMW that he, he had, it's the same configuration as that. So uh, apart from the fact it's got a Suzuki engine in it, it should handle the same way. We won't know until we get out on the track. Yeah, and obviously he was on a grass track bike um, before the last, you know, the grass track bike and then the BMW before that. So obviously looking forward to having a speedway bike under you. I'm really looking forward to it. It feels really comfortable. So, um, I, you know, we work, as I say, we won't know till we get out there, but it, it, even the R1 that we had, which was a grass bike, that handled so much better than what was actually an old speedway frame with a, an Aprilio engine in it. So we seem to be going up each a step each time. Hopefully we're going to be competitive on this one. We'll only find out later on. Yeah, I mean, it'll be really interesting because obviously Phil's a second-generation rider, young. Uh, we need lots more people like that in the sport, so it's good to see him on a decent bit of kit. Indeed, and you know, I've, I've not seen him ride on, on a speedway bike, but I've heard from other speedway sidecar riders that you know, when he gets on one, he's competitive. So I'm looking forward to it, really am. Yeah, should be very good. So it uh, looks like Keith Wall has uh, run away, so we might try and catch him later. But uh, good to speak to you both. Obviously, have a good night, um, and hopefully, we'll see you at the end of the day in either that repercharge charge or that final. Yep, and yep, definitely in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> a given. <laughs> So we've, uh, we've now caught up with uh, Nev Penfold and Kevin Jones um, back into the sport after a long layoff, both of them, and uh, going real good. And uh, the proof was in the pudding at Leicester because you made the semi final. Yeah, well, I gate four off the outside. There was no drive, so I had to do the old fox bit and uh, tuck back under in the first turn. I believe I overtook you coming off the turn, and then I had to chase Will Penfold down. It took me quite a long time, but. I got with Will and uh, we just couldn't catch Tom in time to make the A final but I was really happy with the result, the track rode well, the bike's running good, we're just sort of getting to terms with it now, learning the setup and that because it's a, bright, a new bike and um, I was just glad to finish the meeting without being spat off to be honest. <laughs> now obviously uh, like, I, like I said to at the beginning, you had the, the layoff, uh, didn't ride for a long time then came back and you had a few teething problems but then obviously the final last year at Somerset and then right on the pace at Leicester as well. It must be really good to know that you've, you've come back into it and you're sort of straight into the pointy end, really. Well, you know, there's, there's a few of us here that were original Paul Pinfold riders. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was very fortunate to ride against Paul at a lot of the meetings and that. And, um, yeah, some of the boys here, we're getting to the stage now where we're all getting... Um, near a retirement and I think at the end of the day if Keith Wall don't stop making money mates behind you no it's um, it's nice to see some of the younger boys into the sport especially like my son Jack Philip Wynn young Tom all got nice bikes as you can see the presentation's brilliant now we've got more sidecar speedway outfits than we've ever had and at the end of the season I think it probably might be my me me last season I'll just wait and see but see how fit we'll we see. Are next year. <laughs> <laughs> See how fit we are, you know, we're, we're one of the older crews now, we've got a combined age of what? Oh god, that's what, 50, 100, 100 and 108, 109? A bit less than Terry and uh, John, but yeah, between us we're one of the older crews now, so it's high time these young bucks took the mantle away, you know. But um, all the time I'm enjoying it this year, as long as you know, I enjoy it, I'll carry on for the time being. And, uh, I hope to see it progress. I'm still coming. Obviously, when we do retire, we'll still come and help promote the sport and maybe get a youngster to have a go and see how it goes from there. Yeah, you know. I, I know that uh, having spoke to you lots of times on this subject, that sort of the future of the sport is something that's really important to you. And uh, obviously, son Jack now riding. And one of the one of the riders that we sort of focused on in our intro was Jack because he's been going so well um, on the run up. Um, so, really, any thoughts on Jack? Really, you must be really chuffed to see him going so well. Or really worried about his going so well, don't well, yeah, no, there is that. Well, yeah, he's, 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 he took it really well. He has. I mean, he did. I don't know if you're aware of this, but when he was a youngster, that him and his brother Joe both had speedway bikes, and they were both very competent. And I think that's helped him with throttle control and that. You know, he hasn't had a dump yet, so when he's had one like I had last year, and then get up and come back and, and ride again, you know, we'll see. But I mean, yeah, at the moment he's going good. Hopefully, he's not getting too overconfident and. But yeah, I think we'll see him in a few finals this year. I'd like to think so. 
I yeah. think so as well. I think, like you said, there's a few youngsters now coming in that are really going well. On the chair with him, who I rate as one of the best passengers in the country. You know, sorry, Kev. <laughs> and I actually, actually, that leads on to my next question for you, Kev. Really, because obviously uh, we're talking about young riders coming in Ke uh, with Jack and Will and several others but um, passengers are a bit of a shortage at the minute yeah very much so um, you've got a job next year yeah uh, yeah say so like like for me I was out of it for nearly 11 years as you know we all know why and bless him like um, yeah I uh, never gave me opportunity so I jumped at it really it was just going to be just for a bit of fun and then yeah we, we got a bit serious with it and yeah thoroughly enjoying it like I say Kizzy like um, he idolised me and Simon when we was both racing together so he knows what he's doing he's come from a very young age followed it for all these years and he just takes so much in and he, he's, he's got so much in him he's going to be a very very good passenger I think it doesn't matter who gets on the bike, back, back of the bike with he, he'll, he'll make it work you know he's, he's so confident with himself and whoever he gets on the bars with so yeah yeah. Let's say, um, but yeah there is some, a few good passengers out there but like I say yeah, I, I rate Kizzy very very highly not being biased but yeah there's not that many good passengers around coming into it and like I say it's, it's anything it's, it's like Neville just said the older generation are coming back in to try and get it going again and hopefully like I say some more youngsters can come in if we can help them we'll try and help them yeah I really think so because uh, you know like drivers is, drivers are picking up but we just need to get those passengers in and like you say Kiz has uh, been he's had a phenomenal rise really yeah. to the to where he is now and he obviously rides with Kieran on the grass and he does a great job yeah. and on the speedway he's doing a fantastic job with really new riders as well but um, I'm not sure how we're going to get new passengers into the sport the drivers seem to be up for it but the passengers are not so sure it no. be my cup of tea that's just no that, that, that's, that's the thing that you say sometimes like say passengers turn into riders but it's like you say it, it's getting the people into it really um, it's the nature of the beast yeah, it, yeah you know? say driving it doesn't, doesn't appeal to me in the slightest really I, I just prefer the passenger but yeah um, it's a, yeah, it's, garage, it's, it's a lot of hours in the garage really and yeah like I say yeah touch wood we've we've been quite lucky and uh yeah just hope we have a good result tonight really so it brings back a lot of memories this track for me I've had some really really good results as you know you've had some good results here with certain rides in the past so yeah I just just want to have a good meeting today if, if we make the semis I'll be happy if we yeah. make the semi I'll be happy because there are a lot of boys coming on the pace like young Tom there he's got his new bike and Philip's got his and I'm sure they'll go straight to it like ducks yeah. to water yeah. you know and, I think, yeah, they, uh, they've, they, they, most of them are pulling 25 years plus on us, so, you know. Just, yeah, because we've proved that in Leicester. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah, we still, you know, they've still got a bit to go, exactly. We, we, we have, you've got to have the run of the luck, as Wills always says. You've got to have the run of the luck, and, you know, hopefully, Lady Luck, we'll have a good evening tonight. As long as everybody packs up and goes home, I'll be happy. You know, so that's the main thing. So, track looks good, so I think we'll have a good meeting. There'll be, might be a few, few spoilers. Um, yeah, just see how everything goes, really. Just hope everybody has a good meeting and everyone has a safe one, really. So, yeah. Okay, well, thanks for catching up, boys. Um, have a really good night and, uh, yeah, and just thanks. enjoy yourselves. Hopefully, Cheers. catch you at the end of the night if you're on the podium. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, after speaking to uh, Neville and Kevin, it only seems fitting to come over and find Jack Penfold and Kiz Ivy. Um, we've just been talking about you, Jack, quite a bit so far on the, uh, on the production. And Kiz, you've just had a mention as well, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. But Jack, obviously, uh, what are we now? Third season in, driving? Second. Second season, and obviously... Meeting number... Right, Leicester office is meeting number five. And obviously, you've got the DNA to, to be a, a sidecar racer, but... Even you must be surprised by how well it's all been going. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mechanical gremlins, but then it's all a learning curve in it at the minute. So do what we can do, and hopefully we'll get there. I think, yeah, the, the sort of mechanical side of it comes, doesn't it? But um, just to be so on the pace with the top riders must feel real good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've shot myself a little bit, if I'm honest. But, um, well, I ain't blowing no smoke up in. But after every ride we come in, he tells me what I'm doing wrong, what I need to change, what I'm doing right. Working really well together. And, yeah, it seems like we've got a good pairing going at the minute, and that helps a lot, doesn't it? So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And also, um, little things like you guys being on the front cover of the promotional stuff oh, yeah. must feel real good yeah definitely yeah. definitely that's a big boost confidence boost definitely yeah. But, um, yeah I don't want to get too confident no no he keeps moaning at me about it so, <laughs> so I keep saying to him just wait dad we're getting a race together eventually so yeah first race tonight is uh, I'm off the outside I think he's off the gate one okay. so hopefully we look up in the dirt on the bank and then see you later, <laughs> later. well We've, uh, like I say, kids, we've just been talking to, uh, to Nev and Kevin about you. Um, 
at the moment, lots of people are citing you as sort of one of the best in the game at the minute, so that must feel real nice. Um, well, yeah, it's, uh, that's a confidence boost, but like Jack says, we try not to get too confident because it's a long way to get up to the top. The top boys are really fast, you know. If we can just be progressing every meeting, we're more than happy with that. Obviously, we want to win. Who doesn't? But it's working at the moment, so... Hopefully carry it on. So uh, just so that um, just to talk about some of your sort of journey here. I mean, you raced with uh, Mark Warren for a while, and then and then jumped on with Paul Whitelam um, and did a sort of season there, which was was tough going, I think. Yeah. Um, and then now you've got this partnership with Jack and partnership with Kieran on the grass, and everything seems to be sort of playing into your favour. Yeah. Well, it's both of them are doing really well for new riders. Like it's it's really unexpected, but to be part of both teams is great. But Obviously, with the speedway, Jack's pretty much jumped on out of nothing. So we talk to each other, come in and talk to each other. Obviously, Dad and the Spanners, and he's so experienced as well. Like he helps us untold amounts. So we've got a good team around us. Hopefully, we can just show it on the track. Yeah, and I think that makes an awful lot of difference having the right people around you. And uh, Jack, so if you just tell us a little bit about this outfit, obviously it's the it's a real good looking bit of kit and that's why we're seeing it on the posters at the minute I think but um, what frame is it what's the engine <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a Gary Jackson built frame Gary rode this here in 2006 in the gold cup and went really well on it and then uh, the engine is an X up so the engine's actually the same age as me so yeah 29 years old had a bit of work done to it um, yeah, that's it really. So, yeah, that's it. I said a bit of work done to it. Um, been quite lucky really with sponsorship as well. I've got a man, Colin Trap. Obviously, you see Trap racing up the side. He buys all my engines for me, which is a great help. Um, Brisk Construction, my brother in law John over there, he's helped out a lot. Steve as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, financing it, that's, I think that's the main problem everyone has with doing this. I'm quite lucky, I don't do the grass track, I've got no intention of doing the grass track. But everyone else here, two bikes, aren't they, to pay for, to run, to finance, and yeah, it's a lot of hard work, but yeah, we're, uh, we're getting there. Everything's a learning curve, every meeting we take step by step, and yeah, we'll get there in the end. Well, best of luck, boys. I know that lots of people are looking forward to seeing you go uh, better and better, because obviously we like a young crew in this sport, and uh, best of luck tonight, hope you enjoy it and hope it all goes well. Cheers, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Bob. Now we've caught up with Will Offen and Steve Hargreaves and uh, Will and Steve have been going real good this uh, this season in the, on the grass. Um, had the one ride at Leicester and went had a decent night as well. So here we are at the Isle of Wight. Will, what's your initial thoughts on the circuit and what's your initial thoughts on your evening? Um, yeah, the circuit looks good. Um, I think it was probably 2008 last time we rode here and yeah, really, really enjoyed the track. So um, hopefully we're going to go all right tonight, really. Yeah, so. and the track obviously a little bit wider than Leicester. Leicester's very much an up and down in the tight corners and this is much wider. Do you think that will suit your style? Uh, we'll find out tonight. <laughs> I really say that because yeah. uh, just in the week we were talking about um, Frittenden and and the way you went to Frittenden was good, and, the, yeah. the, and Frittenden is very similar in the fact that it's a, a blast up the straight and then a tight turn, yeah. and then this is a bit similar to Leicester, and obviously it's a bit more wide, and that's yeah. kind of why I asked. Yeah, well, I don't know, yeah, we'll have a, yeah, because uh, this would probably be one of the biggest speedway tracks that we, uh, yeah, we go on, so, yeah, and I say it's been a long time since I've been here, so, yeah. but, uh, should be alright. So, Frittenden last week obviously went really well, a couple of heat wins, and then a, a place in the final as well, so pleased with that? Yeah, over the moon, yeah. Yeah, so. Any, change, any sort of changes to, I know that the grass bike's going real good, but any changes since Leicester to the Speedway outfit? Uh, no, I've just lost a bit of weight, so hopefully... Uh... Oh, well, that might help, yeah. you never know. Yeah. <laughs> bit of chassis work, yeah. but not on the bike. And Steve, if I bring you in, Steve, um, obviously returning to the sport. I know that you, um, you used to race with Tim Bennett years ago and then um, had a couple of goes out with Will, uh, but now back full-time. Yeah, we... Um... On the way over here uh, this afternoon, this morning, I was thinking, when, when did I ride the Isle of Wight last? And um, mine was 20 years ago. I think it was 99 the last time I was here. And um, it hasn't changed at all. Um, like I say, I think me and uh, Will have paired up quite well now. We're starting to um, get some nice results. Um, got a bit of confidence in each other now. Um, things are coming together. I think you know we'll just push on and see how we get on with the Masters coming up. And uh, with this, uh, with the, you know, four rounds for the Sidecar Speedway. So, fingers crossed. 
we'll keep it sunny side up and keep going. Yeah, well, um, let's hope so. I mean, like you said there, it's, it's sort of four rounds. And uh, this first one's at, at here, and we've got one at Somerset, Leicester, and then Manchester. Is there one of the four that you're particularly looking forward to, Will? Uh, definitely Manchester. It was tonight. I was looking forward to coming back here tonight. But, um, yeah, we, we had a ride at Manchester a couple of years ago, and I, I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, looking forward to getting back there for sure. Yeah, and then, uh, obviously, I, mean, I think everyone's looking forward to that Manchester Manchester one at the end of the season. Um, but, uh, obviously, it's a big season of grass track as well ahead of us. So, you've got to sort of swap your styles a little bit. Steve, as someone that's raced passenger for a long, long time, um, is there anything you have to think about as you come in as a passenger, going from grass track only six days ago to Speedway tonight? Getting out of the gate, that's the main thing. Uh, getting us tight around the turns. Um, like I say, I've returned back to the sport. The bikes are a little bit different. They're a lot quicker, a bit more power. I've aged a little bit since, so um, I did question with stamina you know, when I first come back into it. Um, I think we've overcome that a bit now. Um, we're both looking at our fitness as best we can as well. And um, we, I think we've got the stamina and we've got the speed. Um, that's the combination we need to move forward. So. Yeah, I think that's something that people overlook is the, the sort of fitness side of it. They think that we just sort of sit on the bike and the bike takes us around, but it does need a lot of fitness. And Will, you've said yourself you've lost a bit of weight, shed a bit of weight. Um, have you found that that's helped you any, in any way? Oh, massively at Fritton. And the, the, the opening round we'd done at Leicester, I was really struggling now. Um, and that's the heaviest I've ever been. And I thought to myself, you know, I need to need to do something about this. So, yeah, at Fritton, and it was massively different, yeah. Yeah, well... So, I do. I mean, it certainly looks. Yeah, still we yeah, still we go. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to ask. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Just a final thing, Will. I think I just want to ask you about. Obviously, on Saturday, um, your son William had his first grass yeah, track. So, yeah, how did that yeah. go for him? Very proud of him. Yeah, he he loved it. He's been so excited about it, and uh, yeah, he done me proud really. Yeah. So yeah, and he, he went real good, yeah, and he can't wait to get back out there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, got deep pockets. Yeah, that's the trouble. <laughs> Well, good luck tonight, boys. Obviously, you're going good at Leicester, so I'm sure that tonight will be great as well. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you Cheers. Well, we couldn't start this evening without having a chat with the reigning defending British champion, Paul Whitelam. Uh, back at the Isle of Wight, Paul, obviously that's very exciting. Yeah, it's a great track. Uh, the bank curves and it's a nice, fast uh, course. That's yeah. good. And I think that's probably why everyone likes coming here, is because it's so quick. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to ride a speedway bike on a track like this. Yeah, and you've just said that, but I did notice behind me you've got the grass strap bike here. Yeah, so I put an engine in the Speedway bike, so I blew it up at Leicester, put it in a couple of days ago, and it didn't sound too good, so I brought the grass strap bike just in case. Uh, okay, so if you've... Uh, I'm just looking... Oh, the grass bike, it, grass bike and Speedway bike, so we've got two bikes here today. Um, would there be a situation where you would possibly go and use the grass bike and not the Speedway bike? I don't think so tonight. Um, if it had been really heavy out there, or thick and wet, then possible, but uh, not tonight looking at the weather. No. Now, we talked about uh, Frittenden um, to a few of the other riders, and obviously you were in action last week at Frittenden. Um, real tough days racing there. It was actually, yes. Um, I don't know what it was, but uh, I did struggle a little bit. Yeah, and um, Alan was on for that one, but tonight, Richard Webb on for tonight. Uh, no, Alan's hurt his back again. Uh, we went to Germany this week, and I think he's tweaked it a little bit more, so he's had to have a night off yeah and uh if in germany you were racing at ludinghausen is that correct yeah that's right yeah nice big track there yeah thousand meters of grass and uh, obviously very different to a speedway track oh yeah it's uh, very deep and it does dig out yeah so how do you think uh having raced only a couple of days ago now on a on a sort of real deep grass track that's over 100 mile an hour how do you think that you're you're going to have to adapt tonight to a speedway track i think it'll be fine yeah <laughs> i'm sure i hope so anyway <laughs> That's a lot of hope in there. I'm sure that <laughs> there's a lot going on, I think, with Paul um, that he doesn't sort of give himself credit for. When, when we watch Paul later, he's got a real uh, style on the bike that he just looks so comfortable with the machine. And Paul, I've spoke to you about this before. It must feel so good to be riding a bike that you feel so comfortable on. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's a lovely bike. You know, it's, it's about 20 years old now. And what, so what's the engine in it? Uh, we've got an R1 in it. Okay. So. Well, I know you've had a few engine problems in the past with it, but hopefully everything stays together today because we do know that you are one of the favourites for this. Best of luck for defending your title this evening and then for the rest of the season. Um, and hopefully we'll see you on the rostrum at the end of the night. Thank you, I hope so. <laughs> Now we've found uh, Mick Cave, and Mick Cave obviously one of the top riders in the Sidecar Speedway in Britain. And Mick, back at the Isle of Wight, we've been talking to lots of riders who seem very excited. Why do you think that the 1,000 Sidecars, the riders, are so excited about coming back here to the Isle of Wight? 
Uh, I don't know, I love it over here. It's um, a shame we ain't been here for so long, but uh, yeah, no, it, it is good. Nice track, nice bank corner. Yeah, no, I really enjoy it. Uh, obviously, last year you were uh, one of the top sort of top riders in the country, and this year we're all expecting the same. Um, Mark Crosser probably just about had the edge on you last year, and then obviously Paul won the title. So, any changes this year to make sure that you can keep up with those or catch up and overtake those ones? Uh, we, we, we've done bits and pieces, and um, yeah, no, it's uh, nothing's really changed much. But uh, you know, it's, it's going well though, and I'm pleased with it. So that's the main thing. And, uh, another thing you must be pleased with is uh, the amount of sort of young riders and, and new crews that we've got coming in. I know that Sidecar Speedway has been something that you've been involved with for a number of years, parking right back to the Paul Pinfold times. So uh, you must be really pleased to see so many young riders coming through. Oh yeah, no, it is really good. It's a, sh a shame we can't get a few more of the glass track riders and like the winter burns and that back over here and uh, get them back into it full time because like, it is um, it is exciting and it's, you know, it's going to be a well good night tonight. So um, yeah should be good brilliant well Mick good luck for tonight um, sure it will go well everyone's looking out for you and there's a lot of people here wanting to see you do well so good luck for tonight thanks Ev. cheers so now we're uh, we're with uh, well former British champion Mark Costa and it seems unusual calling you former because uh, last year obviously you were still the man to catch but missed out on that title yeah we had a couple of um, chains breaking which cost us it ultimately so yeah and uh, obviously, this uh, we've already started this season at Leicester, and everything went eventually went okay there. Yeah, new bike, so setting it up, it was sort of a bit of trial and error. And we'll see what we did tonight. Obviously, not got Carl on, so that's a, a, another difference which could play a factor into tonight. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that was one thing I was going to ask is I know that Carl's got this niggling injury that's just causing him all sorts of grief at the minute. Um, so, who's on for tonight, and uh, you know, how long do you expect it to take before you've sort of dialed into to each other, really? Well, how long's a bit of string there? Sam's on tonight, so we'll just see how we go. Take each race as it comes and make the appropriate setup changes. And Sam's someone you've ridden with before anyway, so... Yeah, we did a bit of 500 together. We've rode a speedway a couple of times, a bit of grass, so yeah. And uh, you've got this new outfit, obviously, um, and it, I know there was an awful lot of sort of getting it set up at Leicester, but now we're at Isle of Wight, it's a completely different track, so obviously a lot of things to be doing there with the machine. Leicester was the unknown. So now I sort of know what to do. You can sort of set it up from the start and hopefully be somewhere near rather than being a country mile out. So we'll see. Should be all right. And uh, another thing I've been talking to lots of the riders about is uh, the grass track and last weekend at Frittenden. Obviously, um, you had Gareth Williams on at Frittenden last week because of Carl's injury. Uh, looked like it went really well, but from your point of view, did everything go smoothly? Yeah, fine for me. I was happy. Um, no problems for me at all, actually. So yeah, can't complain. Yeah, I mean, you were in excellent form and we we're expecting the same tonight. And uh, I've asked you before about this, but um, obviously everyone expects you to win when we come anywhere. So is there any added pressure for you at all? The yeah, pressure is only what you put on yourself, isn't it? So I, I expect to win. I don't expect. Everybody wants to win. So I go with the want to win. And once that hunger goes, that's, the, that's where you got to watch. But there's no pressure from anybody else. It's just what I put on myself. Yeah. Well, we're about to speak to your brother, I think, in a minute. Obviously, he was going really well last week as well and finished second, for, uh, and that must be nice for you to see your brother going so well on the grass, but he's got a new bit of kit tonight as well. Yeah, I built, I built three or four of them at the same time, so that's the, uh, the second one. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how he does on it. <laughs> well, obviously, uh, I know that he's getting very excited coming second to you last week, um, and it might not be long till he's challenging you. We'll see. I'll stop <laughs> sharing information with him. Yeah, I spoke to Mum in the week and she said uh, she said that there's a little bit, he's getting a bit close now and uh, yeah, obviously you do share an awful lot of things with Tom and your expertise and yeah, yeah I mean, sharing. yeah, I mean, how close does he need to get before that stops? In front. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we never, tonight might be tonight. This might be a piece of kit that does it for him. Yeah. Well, good luck for tonight, Mark. Obviously, we'll be expecting you to be up the front. Um, hopefully everything goes nice and smoothly and good luck to Sam as well. And um, we'll see you at the end of the day. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thank you. So we finished with Mark. So now we've brought Tom in, Tom Cossa. Um, we've just spoke to Mark about the new outfit. Obviously, really looking forward to uh, getting this thing on the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not as keen as everyone else, but <laughs> I'd like to practice in it first. But there you are. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's one of the problems, I guess, with Sidecar Speedway is we just don't get the track time. Same with grass track, just our sport in general, you know. Um, certainly coming up to the bigger meetings and the grass type I'd like to test. But yeah, nerves are against me today on this thing.
Yeah, we, we just spoke to, uh, to Mark about uh, Frittenden last week and obviously he had a real good ride, um, finishing, well, winning all the heats and then finishing second to Mark in the final and not being too far away either. No, a few people come up to me after and uh, me and Wayne certainly felt we were catching but he'd like to beg differ so. Yeah, I think I said to Mark, I spoke to your mum in the week and she seemed to think that uh, Mark was perhaps sandbagging a little bit. <laughs> Possibly, he likes to do that to me just to warm me up but you know. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, for the sport, it'd be brilliant if you do come on terms with him, obviously, because we'll really like to see that. But Mark was saying that he was, um, you know, you, you guys share a lot of expertise and you talk about racing a lot together. Um, what sorts of things do you find yourselves talking about with regards to setting up the bike and racing? I mean, everything. Uh, you've got to bear in mind that we, we had the same blood with brothers, you know. We rode together for years, well, a year, won a Masters. We've got similarities in the chassis. The only thing differs is the engine and probably quite a bit of height, if you will. Uh, so we, we mean we share all information. Mainly, it's me asking Mark questions and Mark telling me to listen. But yeah, it's, it, we, it's it's everything, you know. Tire pressures, uh, running. I mean, I'm obviously running standard engines at the moment, but we're certainly looking to push on with what engines I'm using and try and get some more power out of them. So uh, on the grass, I know you run a, an R1 cross plane, and since you've turned to that that sort of engine it's real really been the the turning point for you what's what's the engine in this one well funny enough at the start of the season or at the end of last season i actually blew up the cross plane that i was using and i bought an mt10 which is the touring version uh, i've got the same standard motor in both my bikes now they come from the same uh, breakers yard if you will um they're, they're as i said they're the touring version so on paper they sort of they suit our sport down to the ground because they're a tour they've got the low end grunt they don't drive as hard at the top end, but we don't need that out there. And certainly from the data we've produced and the track speed we've got, it's, it's looking good. It's, quite, looking good. it's quite interesting because you just would never think that a, 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 an engine not really designed for racing is so good at racing. Well, this is it. I mean, it's in particular our sport is not no other sport, you know. I mean, you think of what we do to engines. Certainly when you talk to people about the engines and what we do to them, they think we're insane. So for me to do this sort of change, it actually suits it. I mean... I think I'm the only person in the world to ever put one of these things in a sidecar and try it. So the fact it's working is, it, it speaks volumes in itself. I know Rob Wilson's actually using one as well now in both of his grass track and uh, his, yeah, grass track and his speedway bikes. And he's, he's, he's pulling on well. I mean, he went really well at Frittenden. Um, and we're sharing data between the two, but we are not even tuned them yet. These are standard engines. So I think we're just scratching the surface of what these MT10s can really do. OK, well, it's quite interesting to hear that you've, used, you've sort of made that change. I think it'll be interesting to see how it goes on the speedway because uh, Frittenden was sort of fairly... It will, will be a very different surface to this one, I think. Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm completely inexperienced with regards to riding speedways. The last speedway at Leicester, I was on my grass bike and that went superb with the MT10. So hopefully carried on with a lot more speed. Well, we'll wait and see, I think, Tom. Obviously, it's... Uh, Great to see you on a piece of kit that is, um, is sort of worthy of your ability. I think you've sort of turned a lot of heads now and everyone knows what you're capable of, certainly on the grass track, and uh, hopefully this is the piece of kit that sort of turns it around on the speedway for you too. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to see Mark looking at the back end of that bike <laughs> by the season end. But and the others as well. And the others, obviously. <laughs> the others. Well, good luck for tonight, Tom, and obviously good luck to Wayne over there. He's staying away from the camera. Yeah. Hope it all goes well, and uh, yeah, I hope you get dialed in as quick as you can. Cheers, Gareth. Cheers, Bob. Thank you.
with last year is actually uh, uh,
and it's five wins for the outfit in yellow. Paul Wetterland, Richard Webb. Winning time, 77.06. 77.06.
uh, we're in the green. Tough luck there for uh, Tom and Wayne at the front of the pack. And it uh, looks like there's uh, some lots of mechanical equipment there at the uh, cost of the race. The official result goes to the riders and passenger in white, Will Offit and Stephen Hargrave. Winning time, 81.42. Tim McKeon, everybody. Your riders for the Second race went to Philip Wynn and Adam Cooper Smith. And the fifth lot there was Evan Sanders. 81.42 was the winning time, winning number three.
the marvellous, marvellous racing in heat number seven. And uh, oh, on the last bend it all happens, doesn't it? It goes to the pairing red, Mark Coppola, Sam Hee.